Hi, Flashtube. Greetings. I'm Laura. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the Slovak farm. The poopy, poopy, poop, poop, the farm. <clears throat> Forgive my voice. We are filming this while I am sick. We are here today to start a special series that um, I received an email to our Flashtube channel requesting that we do a series on starting to cross stitch and learning how to cross stitch. And I think it's really appropriate. And I think it's a really good idea. We all remember that video from the summer um, of the uh, guy, I can't remember his name, but he has a whole YouTube channel devoted to him trying different things. He bought cross stitch, he tried to learn how to cross stitch, and he could not figure out how to do it because there was no good instructions. We're doing floss tube a disservice here not having this. So, Somebody requested that we kind of talk about the building blocks of learning how to cross stitch, especially if you don't have anybody that crossed to teach you. I taught Joe. I learned years ago, and there was actually really good instructions when I learned, really good instructions available when I learned. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But sometimes you don't get those really good instructions. So we're going to do a series. <clears throat> we're going to talk about learning to cross stitch. I'm hoping these videos last no more than 30 minutes. This one might be a little bit longer because we're going to start with talking about picking out your first project. Um, that's where the person who requested we do this asked that we started. So that's what we're going to start with. If you're a regular viewer and you're like, I don't really need to watch this. <clears throat> then go find somebody you want to have stitch and make them watch it. So we still get the views. Yes, shameless plug. Honestly, if you're a regular viewer and you feel like, I don't really need to watch this, feel free to pass this video, these videos by. I'm just doing this because somebody asked me to do it and I think it would be a fabulous service to people because I have not personally found videos like this in the floss tube realm. They could be out there because there are over 400 floss tube channels. I just can't find them. So YouTube al algorithms. You know, there you go. Um, if you do want to stick around and maybe stitch while you listen to us talk, that'd be good too because you might get to see a kit parade from Laura. <laughs> that, 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 and we all know we love a good that. stash parade. That You should just start it with that. I probably should have. Um, and just so you know, kit. Uh, there are two types of cross stitch things you We're get. Talk about a, that. Uh, okay. You can because you said kit braid. I was gonna start with that. I'll leave you to the beginning of it. Okay. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> there are two different types of. There is a pattern which is literally just the grid and nothing else. It tells you what either DMCs or other flosses. Other people that make floss are? Um, you have all kinds of fancy flosses. DMC, Sullivan's, Anchors. We will go over... I'll, we'll do a video on flosses. Okay. The good that works. And then you also have to pick out your fabric. Which we'll have to do a video on that. Because there's so many different types of fabric and different things you can do. And different things you have to consider when you're doing the fabric. Mm. That we should probably do a video on fabric too. We're going to do a video on fabric. We're going to do a video on... We're going to do a video on materials... I'm going to see where we're at with maybe doing one or two videos on that. This is what just a pattern is going to look like. And if you're wondering, we actually have to go get a free one because you're not allowed to put pay for patterns on YouTube and finally it's copyright. I have a, I have, well I have a free one. We'll do it with the pattern part. But um, we'll talk about patterns. Uh, but, <clears throat> and a kit is everything you need in a nice pretty package. Now, and I'd say like Joanne Fabrics is probably the best place to go for a little bit of kit or, because Hobby Lobby's gone. Hobby Lobby's not gone. No, ho no, it was Pack uh, Pack of Tans is, is gone. So, and, so Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Joanne Fabrics. Joanne Fabrics. Um, Michael's. AC Moore, 
Does Walmart still have a little cross stitch section? Walmart, still, Walmart does carry cross stitch. Um, they will generally. The patterns. The J names. Jacqueline. The patterns you're gonna find at Walmart. I have this pattern twice. No, I don't. The patterns you're gonna find at Walmart are probably gonna be like this size. They're small. That was probably the wrong finger to hold it with. Oh well. <laughs> They're smaller kits. Um, where you're starting to get into the bigger... I don't have any Walmart kit patterns. This is kind of like one. Kind of. This, yeah. is this is actually my personal recommendation for the size you should start with. Because it is stupid small. But it has back stitching and cross stitching on it, so you get a little bit of practice with each. Big patterns like this you're generally going to find in your craft stores or online. One, two, three stitch is a great site, especially if you don't have an LNS. Um, because they have. LNS stands for? An LNS is a local needlework store. So. LNSs are generally owner operated. They're not like your chain stores. They're your mom and pop shops. Some LNSs carry kits. Ours does not. Um, space constrictions there. But you can order your kits. One, two, three stitch sells a variety of kits. Um, most of the kit makers have patterns have uh, or have websites where you can buy your kits. Janlin is a big site. Oh, Janlin, not Jacqueline. Janlin, yeah, Janlin. Okay, okay, that's what you were trying to figure out. Yep. Um, but these are available, these the Janlin kits are available in craft stores. Dimensions has a website. Dimensions kits are available in craft stores. Though, I will say, I'll go over my bit later. Like, I'll, 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 I'll this is a dimensions parade. kit. Um, so, search out. Hirschner's is another really good site. Um, they're a multi-craft website. They do sell a large number of cross-stitch kits. And they're, you know, on par with pricing that you would find in a big box store. There is, there used to be, I don't know if it still exists because I never ordered anything from the stitchery. If somebody knows if they're still around that's watching, put it down in the comments for me. Um, but I felt their prior, their kits were a little pricey. They were probably high quality. They were, I just never it, it, um, well, um, the thing you gotta remember is, is that with especially like with cross stitch, like with everything, you get what you paid for. Now, cheap isn't exactly bad with cross stitch. It's just you can start getting the silk threads and really nice linen cloths, which we'll go over later. But that's why some some stuff is a lot more expensive because of the stuff that's that's in the kit. But you should be worried about if you're just starting. Stick with the small, simple ones for now. Um, Get those done good. Starting with a pattern versus a kit. Let's talk about pattern versus a kit. So what are some advantages to starting stitching with a kit? Done. That's the advantage. Done. You open the thing, you have everything you need. If you go and get a pattern, like I have this one here. That was given to me. You have to go pick out. I asked for what the advantages to a kit were. I just said them. <laughs> can we? Can we? That was, that's the main. That's the advantage. <clears throat> you have everything. What else is there to say? Yes, your part to talk. So a kit has everything you need except for scissors and your finishing supplies. Some kits do come with finishing supplies. I'm missing a kit. Um, because I have a kit. I have another kit that has a hoop. This guy comes with a little hoop. Um, 
that you'll finish this him in. This guy comes with all... Some kits come with small hoops or small frames. I have a completed piece that I did that came with an inexpensive plastic frame. It's not high quality, but it's cute. I mean, you know. So, for a beginner, starting with some... So, for a beginner, it's, you know... The train of thought just left the station without me. For a beginner, it's a lot less... Investment. Of time. And head. Of everything. Of resources, of time. Um, you know, here's a little kit. Let me try it and see if I like it. Let me check you know, something with this one. Let me, you check with yours, too. I want to see if the pattern actually has that little... Those little charts that, have, that everybody uses for cross-stitching. What little charts? Yep, scissors. Not right here. Um... So, like, uh, this one has it right here. I know this kit is a Walmart kit. Like, this has the little thing where it uh, explains it. Um, I know, not all of them have that, no. This is, like, most kits this size are going to be under $10. Depending on what's involved in the kit. Um, so it's not a huge investment, and if you don't like it, if you don't like cross-stitch, you haven't invested in spending five, you know, some smaller patterns are only five dollars, some bigger small, some bigger patterns are in the ten to twelve, fifteen dollar range, then you have like twenty, twenty-five dollar patterns, you know, you can get some pretty expensive patterns. Um, Lady of the Flag! Yeah, let's talk about out of our patterns. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a more economical investment versus a pattern. I Especially am, for your sti for a stitch. And also, for dyes. Because as I said, you know somebody who might be interested and have to be a dye? You get you go, hey look, there's a guy who's cross-stitching. Yes, I do. Getting something like this, it's not very girly, but it's still cool. Or Lars Little Santa, which you can give to a little kid or a friend or something. It's still something for you to check. You, a lot of them are hearts and flowers. And you, 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 you. But you know, especially around the holidays, you can get really nice holiday themed ones that don't make you feel like you're playing with a Barbie. Right. <laughs> I finally figured out a way of describing it. Only took me a decade. How do you have this many kits? Not all kits are the same. Most kits are not the same between the different companies. They vary based on company, based on, and skill level. These are all the same size kits. They're roughly the same size projects. These are not the same skill level. So should we go over the things to look for to, to figure out what, what skill level is? I got a couple things that you love. These are all roughly the same size kits. They're not the same skill level. Uh, you need so I, I, I say that because you want to start with something that... I mean, yeah, I, I'm... I'm gonna say there's probably a person or people out there who could pick up a mirabilia and stitch a mirabilia their first go around and it will be beautiful i'm gonna say that there's probably a lot of people who aren't gonna have that it's not that stitching a mirabilia is difficult but there's different threads there's more than just cotton threads in a mirabilia there's beads in a mirabilia you know you don't want to pick out something with specialty stitches your first go around. Um, can I see some of your things so I can point out how they would know that? So let's start with that one because that one's one of the easiest charts I have. Yeah, this one, part of the reason why you why it's easy is if you look at the stitches on it. Where's the camera? You see how there's no outline edges? It's all just X's? When you look close, it means there's no back stitching. Which means if you're just starting for first one... This is pretty easy because it's only cross-stitching. A little bit of, the of a confetti fun. 
but not that bad because it's actually grouped together. Um, confetti is shading of different, slightly different colors to make it look more realistic. And confetti can get really crazy. Try to avoid that when you first start. <clears throat> because you'll make mistakes, you rip it out, you wreck the fabric. If you're, oh, by the way, okay, I got really mad. I wrecked the fabric, and I was crying because I destroyed a kit. She had to go get me more fabric. But it was okay, I got more fabric. But you no. can do. <clears throat> you can actually go, if you have fabric, and say you just started on it, and somebody walks by, bumps your arm, you spill coffee on it. You can probably take that fabric to an LNS, and they can probably point you at least help you order the right type of fabric to replace it. There's no such thing as a really unique fabric that comes from a kit. They usually almost always are Most white. Most kit fabrics are white or a basic color, and a lot of, especially the craft stores, like I know Joann's, I don't generally shop anywhere other than Joann's, um, because... That's really what's around me. Um, so I know that Joann's carries the different types of fabric in tube rolls. Um, and it's fairly inexpensive. Here's another good beginner kit. Um, it's just a little Disney kit. It's a Janlin kit also. One thing to note, some, kit, oh, some kits, especially Janlin's, uh, well most kits... The floss comes like this. You're going to have to separate the floss. Sometimes it gets a little frustrating. Um, also about the fabric, like on this one here, it says 14 count and then Ada. Ada, is, we'll go over that with the fabric, but if you ever do like need to get new fabric because it broke, that's what you need to look for in order to buy new. Just take this line, put it into Google, and put one, two, three, stitch afterwards. You'll get it. This kit is a little bit more sophisticated than this kit. Because this kit does have back stitching around her. But, you know, it's pretty easy to follow back stitching. It's nothing super complicated. <clears throat> or anything like that. One thing I will say, this is a dimensions kit. I would say this is another good beginner's kit. One thing I really like about dimensions kits currently is they do this. Dimensions has started putting the floss on, it's sandwiched in between two pieces of cardboard. It's stuck in there. It's labeled, it's numbered, and you have a colored picture. So you don't have to separate the floss. This is a nice beginner's kit because there's not a lot of colors. It's got some back stitching in it. And, you know, it gives you a good basic technique practice. I like the way they did mm -hmm. this. This is the... This is actually a very easy, easy one to start. This is the kit. I got this from a cross-stitch convention. This is the Witchy Stitcher. It's a Witchy Stitcher kit. She is on Etsy. I will find her shop and link her. But this is why I like... Why I wanted to point this out. These are the DMC numbers for these colors. She makes it darn near idiot proof for getting, if you need additional flaws, you got the numbers right there. So, the difference between that and something like a dimensions kit. Ooh, she has a pat needle. <coughs> nice kit. This is kitted up by the designer, I think. It might have been kitted up by the LNS. Um, so, we bought that at. A retreat from uh, the boys. The boys. Silk weavers. Needleworkers delight. They're an LNS in New Jersey. They're a big LNS. They have a website. You can shop online with them if you need an LNS. So next time we visit. But that was all kitted room. up. And that was kitted up by either the designer or the LNS. It wasn't kitted up by the company. Sorry about the earthquake. Um, a lot of times companies that sell kits like Dimensions, Janlin, Design Works, Bucilla will have the colors coded in their own numbering system. It's 
frustrating, but it's due to copyright issues. It's due to copyright issues. And it's some... their way of combating copyright issues. Because when I first started stitching, I know I first started stitching with Jamlin. When I first started stitching, I, the kits that I bought were Jamlin kits. Jamlin kits had DMC numbers. They don't now. Um, the last Design Works kit I did did have DMC numbers and they were a pretty close comparison. But again, it's it's done with the intention of preventing copyright issues. <clears throat> um, so, <laughs> again, on the idea of go within your skill level. This is another Dimensions kit. This is called a Gold Collection. This is not as easy as this. Um, um, uh, just so you know, I don't think I would stitch this. I'm not... I, she is much higher skill level than me with stitching. This is not something I would recommend starting with. I would get a few stitches in under your belt. Um, I mean, it's not terribly difficult. But it is more involved, and something that is like, so that's a frog waiting to happen. Something like one of these can be a relatively quick stitch, whereas this is going to take a little bit more time. And if you're just starting out, you want to uh, probably see a finished product and realistically figure out what kind of time investment you're going to put in your new hobby. So, <clears throat> you know, that's not to say this kit is only for experienced stitchers. It's just to say, I wouldn't pick this up as my first kit. And since you mentioned time, the one thing I will say is, cross-stitching, especially once you get into the bigger designs, <laughs> or actually once you get into the small mediums and up, they're not, it's not a fast hobby. You don't complete big... I'm pretty sure you can paint something faster than you can cross-stitch. Well, that's it. kind of why you want to start with a smaller kit, too time investment. This kit has beads in it, so something like this, it's not, this is a Joan Elliott design that was kitted up. I got this years ago. I don't even know that it's still available as a kit. But it's not a challenging design to stitch, and it gives you an experience with beading because beading is vastly becoming a big part of cross-stitch. There's beading in Mirabilia's, there's beading in Joan Elliott's, there's beading in... What are the ornaments you, that you did that was all beading? There's mill hook kits. They're not all beading, but there's beading in those. Um, and those mill hill kits, I actually don't have any mill hill kits, are a little bit different than most other kits because they're on plastic. They're on, um, it's called perforated paper. It's like a plastic paper. It looks, you know, it's got the holes like Ada does, but it's plastic. It doesn't fray when you cut it, so you can trim around it, and it'll it'll hold up to being put on a tree. Um, you know the thing with these kits here. <laughs> let's talk about this. Though I will say, in cross stitch, I don't think anything any one stitch in cross stitch is hard. It's just. You have to keep track of it, and it takes time to yeah. do. You know, these, something like this is not hard. It's going to be a little more time-consuming. Same thing with this one. It's going to be a little bit more time-consuming. But, I mean, really, this is, um, this is a kit by a company called Imaginating. They're in Ohio. And it's kitted with DMCs. I mean, it's, those are DMC skeins in there. And there's, what, two colors in there? Three? Two. So it's not hard. It's just the size is time-consuming. Um, this is Design Works. You know, this is adorable. Again, though, it's not hard. It's just going to be really time-consuming. There is going to be some finer nuances as far as backstitching in that. Actually, one other thing I want to point out is, like, right here. See all the different shades there? I don't know if you can actually see it or not. But that is confetti. It's shading. <clears throat> yeah, there's going to be some finer nuances in this. 
with um, shading and maybe like one or two stitches of a color here and then one or two stitches down here. That does take a little bit of getting used to, but that's where counting, recounting comes in immensely handy. Um, that, um, <clears throat> by the way, we've said frogging a couple times. Frogging got that name because you have to rip out the philosophy you made a mistake. Rip it, rip it. Somebody who's an experienced stitcher is going to be watching this. And they're about to have a freak out moment. Why? <clears throat> this is not something you want to start with. This kit's not available anymore, actually. It is the one of the Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams. Um, <clears throat> these are holy moly difficult. All that. You know, that's not something you're going to want to try to stitch until you've got a few things under your belt. Um, this also, Bucilla um, Heirloom Collection, would be along the lines of a Cross Stitch Gold Collection kit. I bought this. I have yet to stitch it. <clears throat> I think it's got linen in it. Oh no, it's even weave. I could probably stitch this. Um... Bucilla kits haven't been my favorite in the past. I will tell you, I have favorite kits versus not so favorite kits. Bucilla is not a favorite kit maker. I struggle sometimes with their kits. I find their charts a little bit harder to read, unless it's a very basic kit. Um, <clears throat> I haven't bought a new Janlin chart in a while. I mean, this is 2011 copyright. I've heard some people talk about Janlin has gone kind of downhill as far as their kit qualities. The Janlin kits I've stitched have been very good quality. <clears throat> well, you're also years out of date. But I'm years out of date. Um, one the one is one downside I know of for kits, especially with the cheaper ones, is the only real downside I ever had was the not enough floss of the floss bricks. That's one of my problems with Bucilla kits is the floss snaps, breaks fairly easily because they use a... And if they don't, you have DMC conversions listed, that can be annoying. They don't necessarily match. I've never had to contact a company and say, I need more flosses of a, for a chart, for a kit. Some people have and have had positive results. Some people have and have had not positive results. Um, I think it depends on the company. You know, and it depends on... I think it really it depends on the company. That is the one... That, that is one of the reasons why people <clears throat> do like patterns. And if you have an LNS, getting a pattern becomes a lot easier. Especially if it's a really nice lady. Maybe a guy, but I almost guarantee it's going to be a lady. Working there. Because they will help you go get fabric. And the fluff. They'll help you find this stuff. One, because they're usually nice people. And two, you're giving them more money. Yes. <laughs> now there are patterns if you feel like you don't find a kit that you like or that doesn't suit your taste, there are patterns you can start learning how to cross stitch on. Um, <clears throat> this is a hands-on design chart. It's two colors. It's very easy. Very easy to follow. You don't have to do it on this dark fabric. There are some disadvantages to working with dark fabric. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but you know, if you have, if you find an LNS that's close to you, you can go in, you can get by the stuff to make to do this. It's going to be a bit of more of an investment, especially like this is done with what's called fancy floss. So it's going to be a bit more of an investment. Uh, um, may I say something about the floss? Yes. One? This one here is done with what's called even weave. We'll go over the fabric, fabrics later. But the one thing you need to know is. Whether it be even weave, linen, or Ada, the three main types that I know of at least, cross stitch fabric, 
the patterns work on all of them. Right? Right. You probably want to start with an Ada, um, just because... And sometimes they'll come with one of these. The holes are bigger. It's a little bob that it's you hang charm. from. It's a charm. It's part of the project. Um, you probably want to start with an Ada because the holes are bigger and you can see it. And you're stitching what's called over one, whereas opposed to an even weave or a linen, you're stitching over two. When we talk about fabric, we'll get into that. I was trying to find a couple other really good charts to um, give you a... I have a couple of... I'm pretty sure this is available on her website, on her Etsy store, Lindy Stitches Etsy store. Um, this is a pretty straightforward basic pattern. It's just color blocks. This is a good one to start with. I did get it as a kit at Nashville. I'm not entirely sure. I think just the pattern is available. Do you remember where it cut us off at? Me mid rant. So I'll just start the rant again, okay? Okay. Um, how long was I? I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> you can go on websites and find free designs. Oh, yeah, now I remember where I was. I don't have any free designs in my uh, pile. I do have free designs, but I don't have um, any in my pile. I would also say magazines are another good spot to look. Mm -hmm. And say you have a friend that cross stitches and they sent you to these videos. Oh, this is a free one. Then they could make, might have a magazine they can let you borrow. One thing with borrowing cross stitch patterns, I'm going to say right now if somebody lets you borrow the pattern, you have to have the whole freaking pattern. You have to have the whole thing. Yeah. You can't have a copy. Borrowing gets into the sketchy copyright territory. No, no, honestly, I don't think they care about... Do they really care about those magazines? Um, yes. It gets into the sketchy... I mean, it gets into the sketchy copyright territory. We, you know, as stitchers do borrow charts from other stitchers. You know, if somebody has an out-of-print pattern and I want to stitch it, I might have somebody who is going to let me borrow it so I can stitch it. And that's okay. But you have to borrow the actual chart. Now you can make a copy and make a work. It's called a working copy. I was going to get to that later. Um, when we got to the but you system. have to technically be in possession of the actual chart. Yeah, uh, it's this is a freebie. It's from the Lizzie Kate site. It's pretty basic. It's got a handful of colors. Um, so there are freebie charts out there. There are patterns out there you can start with, but sometimes, especially if you don't have an LNS, if you have an LNS, you know, go in there, say, I'm just starting to stitch. This is what I like. They will help you find something that will fit your fancy if you've gone to your big box stores and you can't find a kit you like. Uh, uh, that's actually how I got back into cross stitching. That's how I found Dragons of Sumatra. And... If you're wondering, one, I think actually searching Needlework Store and your town would probably be the easiest way to find it, but I would call and see if they do cross-stitch, because not all needle pointers cross-stitch. Needlework stores are not cross-stitch stores. You want a counted cross-stitch store. Um, they're going to have a wider selection. There is a website, I'll link it below, or there's a Facebook group, I will link it below, called Stitching Road Trip. They have a fairly comprehensive list of all of the needlework shops, cross-stitch and needlework shops in the country, and I think they have some overseas, sh they have overseas shops as well. Um, one other thing to do is, um, I do have a question. What? Pause the video. If you are looking to start stitching, she has a Facebook group for stitching. There will be all the social medias linked below, and which is including various ways to contact me and talk to me if you have any questions. Um, if you are a stitcher and you've watched the whole video or you've listened to the whole video, 
um, and you feel like I've left something out, please, you know, leave a polite comment below and say, hey, this is my take on this, or this is, you know, something else that I found. And we will read your comments and edit and add stuff in future videos. This is a work in progress. This is a work in progress. I've never... I want to add one other thing. What? Four guys. I know one... Screw the stigma about guys not doing stuff like this. My personal thought. Whatever. And I know, it is very hard to find patterns. I've actually had people at the LNS looking at me like, I have no... I said, can you help me find that? And they're like, do you like sports? No. And they're like... Ugh. I forgot to add something. One advantage to a kit over a pattern... We started to talk about it, and then we kind of stopped. One advantage to a kit over a pattern is most kits, not every single kit, most kits will include an instruction page that actually details how to cross-stitch, how to make the X's. Or you have these people who actually include a flipping A multiple page stuff. It's Some designers include those instructions in their charts. Yeah, the so I would actually say the witchy stitcher, if she does this for all of her patterns, she's epic. Um, some designers include those oh, instructions. Um, one other thing, two other things I forgot. I just remembered. Uh, if I were you. Especially if you don't have a good place close by that's an L and S. I start with a kit just to get a needle. Yeah, I mean there is a cost involved in buying the pattern, buying the fabric, buying the And a cross stitch needle, needle is not a sewing needle. It is easier to use a cross stitch needle. We'll talk about needles. I know I have a And trick. the other thing you might want to do want to look into is scissors. Well, cross stitch stitches are usually about this big. Or, um, I will show them in the next, when we do scissors, we'll do a video for scissors and stuff. Amazingly enough, I can't find a single chart that actually has how to cross stitch instructions on it. I just showed you one. Except for that one. I have a couple of downloads that I know I've gotten that have how to cross stitch instructions. This one has it. But uh, that just shows you how to do it over two. This, yeah, this is just how to do it over two. I'm sure I have tried some more, but well, it's usually in a kit. I mean, kits are going to include instructions on how exactly to cross stitch. I mean, we're going to talk about it. We're going to show you, but, but kits uh, are going to have it written out. And uh, we'll also do a video about in hand. We'll spring. talk about. We have like I have like a list of topics we're going to talk about. So this is just introductory how to go buy it. If you have any, yeah, this is introductory how to get started. Our thoughts on the best way to get started. My feeling is the best way to get started, especially if you don't have somebody to sit down physically with you and teach you how to cross stitch, is to find a kit and work with a kit. You know, if you find an LNS and you're comfortable walking in there and you're, I mean, there's going to be, there's almost always somebody sitting, sitting at our LNS stitching. And I know if I'm sitting there and somebody walks in and says, okay, I'm new. I'd like to learn how to cross stitch. I'm going to help them learn how to cross stitch, you know, and I can't, and all the girls I stitch with at our LNS would be the same way. I'm sure Shelly, our LNS owner would take the time to teach you. And uh, just for guys, they'll help you. It might take them a second to process. It's not an insult. It's just that rare. I mean, I've, 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 so I've, looked, I've looked at some... Uh, back when I was looking for dragons, the three seconds it took her to process... Wait a minute. You stitch? Oh, okay. Let's see if we can find you some patterns. There are more and more guys starting to stitch, too. Woohoo! <coughs> um, Let's outnumber them, guys. 
So we talked about kits. I think naturally the next video is going to be to talk about patterns. And then we'll start getting into some of the technique, some of the supplies you're going to need. Yeah, supplies. And technique. If there's something you want to see before something else, feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Or contact us on social media and let me know. Yep. Um, if you're an experienced stitcher and you've kind of watched this to see what we have to say, like I said before, if you want to include your opinion on kit versus pattern starting, feel free. Politely. If you're rude, I will delete your comment. <laughs> May I say something? Flat out. If um, you're an experienced stitcher and you happen to know any of those daily sites that give free patterns and can share links, that would be awesome. Yes. I'm going to include some pattern sites or some, some pattern resources for patterns on the next video. I will try to include resources for kits on this video. If you're an experienced stitcher... Leave me a comment below. Leave us a comment below about something you wish you would have learned early in your stitching um, that you think would be helpful for a new stitcher to know, and we will talk about it. So, um, you guys will probably see this on be watching this sometime after Saturday. I'm hoping to get it put together by then. Um, Saturday, whoa. Well, because our normal floss tube video where we talk about our our whips. And our normal floss tube updates go up on Wednesday, so I want to sort of separate. Oh, okay, so you got to wait for Okay. All right. So, thank you so much for joining us. Thank um, you. You know, I, I, I'll give you the whole spiel. Like, subscribe, comment, share on YouTube. All of that. I, Until next time. I definitely want to ask one question for the people watching. What? Does anybody have an idea for the name for this series? can't call it what I want to. So I'm asking, you ask people to get creative, especially crafty people, I'm looking forward to this. I have a couple ideas. I get a hundred of them, so we can have a good thing to pick from, right? Right. Bye. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.